Even more restructuring is set to take place at CNN by the end of the year. In an internal memo circulated this week, CNN CEO Chris Licht signaled jobs are most certainly on the chopping block. Mm, Licht cited the global economic outlook as a reason for the additional changes, saying, quote, we must factor that risk into our long-term planning. All this together will mean noticeable change to this organization that, by definition, is unsettling. These changes will not be easy because they will affect people, budgets, and projects. Oof, that's some straight talk. Licht was given the Herculean task of revamping the floundering network when he took the job of CEO back in April. Since then, he's slashed CNN podcasts, staple shows, and CNN Plus. Mm. Uh, I was watching after the Fetterman uh, Oz debate. I turned on CNN. Um, our uh, Alyssa Farah was on, mm. uh, former briefly hosted the show a few times, and some other folks. And I, I thought their commentary on the debate was very good in mm. that it absolutely conceded that Fetterman had done a terrible job and, and the, the hosts um, a, a allowed the more Republican-leaning guests to press their case that this was just really a travesty for mm. Fetterman compared to the coverage on MSNBC, which was like barely acknowledged that yeah. Fetterman had did a bit. It was just like laser focused well, on how Oz yeah. was a threat on abortion, which I think is a fair point, but it, it just, it was, well, it well, was. The, the criticism should be, he did, there was a bad debate performance. His policies are still worth Democrats voting for. I mean, that's a perfectly legitimate that, argument. But yeah. what I did see from a lot of MSNBC types, and I can't say that I watched the post-election coverage on either of those stations, but I did see a lot of people making arguments that it was ableist to even say that Fetterman had done a bad job. That, I think, is where you're getting to this place where viewers lose trust. It's ableist now yeah. to tell you what I've seen with my own eyes. No, he... he Performed right. poorly. It was very difficult to watch. And also, I want a right to choose, so I might vote for him is, is, right. a, is a view that people could have. So I think it's, uh, anyway, I think it's to CNN's credit that they did not, maybe some of them, to what I saw, it was not falling into that kind yeah. of, of trap. It was kind of brutally honest. Um, so do, which is they're a, doing the right thing. I, yeah. I, I, no, I think, Chris, I think Chris Lick <laughs> might have a good plan for how to restore um, uh, CNN's, uh, to, maybe to its former glory, or at least win back some uh, independent, moderate Republicans um, who had really just you know, gotten sick of it. All, all, all conservatives had, but I'm not, not sure you can win back like Fox News. Lo Diehard loyalists are probably st still going to keep watching Fox, but you you could maybe win back some people by being like le less just laser focused on Trump, laser focused on uh, you know sounding like a not like a progressive because I'm sure you would have criticism for this and not like a true well, progressive, yes. but you know what I mean, like a I mean, liberal Democrat, a I mean, establishment Democrat yeah. perspective. Shows like CNN and MSNBC have always had a much bigger appetite for having what they consider to be a palatable conservative, either mm -hmm. another never Trump conservative or someone like Alyssa, than they do having a progressive on. Yeah. When very rarely someone like Liz Brunig or myself or Katie Hopper ends up on one of those shows, like literally becomes a, a huge viral event mm -hmm. on the left because that's how rare it is. Even people who frankly we have a lot of disagreement with on the left, but reporters who cover the left, like David Weigel, if they get on shows like that, we think it's a cause for celebration. There is no regular leftist on The View, on MSNBC, on CNN, but all of those liberal channels have scads of Republicans. Half The View, or at least two two fifths of The View at this point, are conservatives, but they would all uh, commit so, ritualistic I mean, Anna Navarro Japanese is not suicide. Actually a right, but right never conservative, Trump conservatives, yeah, yeah, which yeah. which is a problem because they have people who don't actually represent mm -hmm. anyone re real in the country. Anna Navarro really represents no one. Um, yeah. uh, Alyssa, I think, does well, represent yeah, people. She's, she's, she's very a talented. Never Trump and, and, yeah, right, right. She was in she, the administration, she was in the, which I think is a great choice, and I think she's doing a great job there. Yeah. Um, but that even is anomalous. But 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 to my point again, they would rather have an actual. Yeah. Trump person, they will put never Trump people, they will have people from Bush's former comms women holding down their primetime hour, they'll do all of these things before they would ever let a populist on. So I think that's why a lot of people on the left feel a lot of empathy for Tulsi Gabbard, even if they don't agree with all of her policies, because she has been someone who has ruffled feathers and been willing to step down from the DNC to endorse Bernie Sanders and take these hard positions. And there's a certain amount of empathy with what she's gone, gone through. Um, with respect to how the establishment media has treated her. Mm. Well, we clearly think libertarian and leftist perspectives <laughs> are, 
are uh, not uh, in, in short supply in the mainstream media. So that's what we've gone with for our show. All right. Well, that's all for today. Uh, we'll be back next week with all the analysis we know you love. Um, I have an exciting weekend. Of course, a lot of Halloween parties for me. What about you, Brianna? Uh, I will be traveling and doing a, what my friends call a Jocktober party, an athletics-themed oh. <laughs> Halloween. How about yourself? I'm, uh, I've got a costume party today, and uh, this is my little hint <laughs> for what my costume might be. You I looked am, at it so easily, Ro Robbie. You I, must because be I am worthy. I am worthy. <laughs> All right. Don't forget, if you have questions for The Hill, you can now text them to The Hill's editor-in-chief, Bob Cusack. To sign up for that, you can head to hill.com. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who prefer to listen while on the go, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. We're also on Roku and other streaming platforms. Hooray. All right. Uh, see you in some clips over the weekend. And next week, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.